In their own search for food, elephants can appear to be very destructive. But they and their evolutionary ancestors have been feeding on vegetation in Africa for millions of years now, and they would not have survived this long by destroying everything in their path. Trees grow old and die naturally. They may be struck by lightning or uprooted in their thousands by violent storms. Lowering water tables might even cause the death of vast areas of forest. And if elephants, possibly suffering from human pressure and persecution, are forced to feed here, then they will, of course, exaggerate and be blamed for the problems. It is quite natural, even without elephants, for plant communities to shift around in their distribution, for forest trees to give way to smaller bushes and even to open grassland. Habitats change, so too does the distribution of animals that depend on them. When new grasslands are opened up, grazing animals are quick to move in. Cape buffaloes are one, and despite the soil erosion triggered by their heavyweight bodies and sharp hooves, grass grows vigorously under their intense trampling and grazing. The buffaloes attract cattle egrets, fearless insect eaters who hunt alongside many of Africa's grazing mammals. Buffaloes are not the only large mammals to pioneer new grazing grounds. Burchell's zebra is another. These striped horses will feed quite happily on tall, wet grasses, trampling and shortening them to the point where they become attractive feeding for herds of wildebeest. Wildebeest like to move between areas of new short grass, their preferred feeding grounds. They move with the rains to achieve this, unlike the impala, an antelope which eats a wider range of greenery and can therefore stay in one place throughout the year. Impala are really edge of woodland animals, so they can turn to leaves and seed pods when even the shortest grass is no longer available to them. Just when it seems there is no plant food left on the ground for any mammal, along comes a little diker. It is making a living out of the smallest shoots imaginable. Where there are concentrations of grazing animals, there will always be predators. The cheetah is watching the displaying impalas with more than just a passing interest. It is hungry and the impalas are vulnerable. Male impalas lock horns in trials of strength. The winners mate with most females, so it is a critical time for them all. But Impala are one of the cheetah's favorite prey, and the big cats sense an opportunity.
They will work together on the hunt, but first they must advance cautiously, positioning themselves for a sudden, explosive dash from as close as possible. The Impalas are still too preoccupied to notice any telltale signs from the bush that might be signalling the presence of a predator. They have pulled down the large male, and now the cheetahs must work quickly. The arrival of scavenging vultures is not in itself a problem, except that their descent from the skies might alert lions and hyenas to the kill. These heavyweights could easily push the cheetahs away and claim the carcass for themselves. One of the cheetahs has to act as a lookout, while the other fills its stomach as quickly as it can. A black-backed jackal appears on the scene of death as if by magic. It too will not trouble the cheetahs. The white-backed vultures move closer. They will try and keep a healthy distance until the cheetahs have finished their meal. While the cheetahs are cooperating, the scavenging vultures and jackals are very much competing among themselves. As they creep closer and closer, they cross an invisible line, and one of the cheetahs has suddenly had enough. So within the elephant's empire, the grasslands that may once have been forests are home to an amazing cast of characters. They are the links in a vital food chain. The most abundant large mammals are the herbivores, many of whom become meat for a lesser number of predators. These in turn are followed by the scavenging hordes who flock to the scene of a recent kill to fight over the scraps. The black backed jackal is one of these. It cannot dislodge the cheetahs, so in the company of marabou stalks and vultures, it plays a waiting game of precision. Too close, and the cheetahs will attack, but too far, and it might miss out on a free lunch. 
Guided by their keen eyesight, more vultures descend from the skies. But the first to take advantage of the sudden departure of the cheetahs is the little jackal. Now she too must work quickly and aggressively. The vultures and marabous are closing in fast. Her stomach mostly clean, and the circle of hungry vultures moving ever closer, the jackal sets out across the open plains. She and her mate have three four-week-old puppies to look after. Black-backed jackals pair for life. And just about the only time they are separated is when one has to stay at home and babysit. Both parents can hunt and scavenge together when an older pup stays at home to share the workload of the new litter. But here, the adults are alone and the pups must be supremely patient when the returning female attends to the needs of her mate first. By the time they are four months old, Young male and female jackals will be preparing to leave their parents. It is rather different for young elephants. They will never know their father and will depend on their mother for at least 10 years. Then the bond between a mother and her sexually mature son must be broken. This is him on the right and the smelling and trunk placing on the back of a closely related female are signs that his sexuality is now advanced. His behavior is disruptive and disruption can spread and unsettle the balance of the herd. Younger elephants may pick up the mood and themselves become troublesome. They can be dealt with by their elders, but the time is fast approaching for the matriarch, the lead female of the family group, to take firm action. And here she comes. She will have noticed that the teenage male's aggression is as much about power as it is about sex, and slowly she begins to isolate him from the rest of the herd. The moves that she makes are deliberate and menacing. He may even be her own son, but both know instinctively that the Empire is calling him to a new way of life. While the young male is coming to terms with his enforced isolation, the family group is consolidating around its females. His sisters and female cousins will never experience the rejection that he is going through. Their futures are firmly rooted within the female herd, where, as they become sexually mature, they will mate with much older visiting males. The relationship between mother and daughter elephant is one of the most enduring in the whole animal kingdom. It will last a lifetime, and they will remain side by side even when they are pregnant and producing more babies.
increasingly though, the young male falls further behind the female herd. But he is now well equipped to survive on his own. He will have stored information on the best feeding and drinking places, and his ability to communicate with other elephants by sound and by smell will also be well developed. He must now set out on his own and find other males who have been similarly banished. He will take his place among them as a low-ranking junior, but after 20 years, he will have won the right to return periodically to different female herds. There, to father the baby elephants who will one day inherit their own African empire.